Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore where these other two equations came from, starting with the base equation that gives us x as a function of time being equal to a times the cosine of omega t. Remember that a was the amplitude of the oscillation, omega was the angular frequency of the oscillation. Find an equation that defines the velocity as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time. Well, there's a couple of ways in which we can do that. One of the ways is using differentiation. In the next video, we'll show you how to do it algebraically, but actually differentiation in this case is actually the easiest way to go. Well, we know that velocity as a function of time, by definition, is equal to x dot as a function of time. What does x dot mean? It's actually the derivative of the position with respect to time. That means that this is equal to the dvt of the position as a function of time. And that means we need to take the derivative of this function right here. Well, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. So this becomes a times the negative sine of omega times t times the derivative of the angle omega t. Since t is a variable, omega is a constant here. So we have to multiply the times omega, which means that this is equal to minus omega times a times the sine of omega t. So that means that the equation defining the velocity as a function of time, which is the derivative of the position as a function of time, which is equal to minus omega a times the sine of omega t. Now to find the acceleration, we can use the same logic. The acceleration as a function of time is equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time. So it's x double dot as we call it, which means it's equal to the second derivative with respect to time of the position which means it's the derivative, the ddt, of the velocity as a function of time. And the velocity as a function of time is defined right here, which means we need, we need to take the derivative of this function right here. Now the derivative of the sine is equal to the cosine, and might as well put parentheses around the angle right there. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine, which means that this is equal to minus omega times a, times the cosine of omega times t, times the derivative of the angle, which is times omega again, which means that this is equal to minus omega squared times a times the cosine of omega times t, and that would be equal to the acceleration as a function of time. Also notice that a times the cosine of omega t is actually equal to the original function x of t, which means that this could be written as minus omega squared times x as a function of time. Summarizing those three then, we can then say that position as a function of time using the trigonometric functions can be written as a times the cosine of omega times t. The velocity as a function of time is equal to minus omega times a times the sine of omega times t. And finally, acceleration as a function of time can be written as minus omega squared a times the cosine of omega times time, which could also be written as minus omega squared times x as a function of time. But these are the three equations using the trigonometric functions that define the position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time. Again, providing, because these do not have phase angles, providing that the initial condition is that the object, the block, is being pulled all the way to the right of the equilibrium point at maximum displacement x equals a, at time equals zero, at that moment it's let go. Otherwise, we'll have to add phase angles to these equations, just like we saw in the previous couple of videos. But anyway, without the phase angle required, these are the three equations that define the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of simple harmonic motion with a specific initial condition, taking the object to maximum distance or maximum displacement in the positive direction, x equals a. And that's how we do that.